When people think bees, they normally think of the honeybee with the sting and all of that sort of stuff. They're never thinking of the solitary bees. There are over 1,600 species of solitary bees. I mean 1,600 species, many of them unidentified. For this month in EnviroTube, we've gone to the Blue Mountains from Sydney to talk to Megan Hellcroft. Megan has a PhD in studying Ostroplevia, a stingless native bee that doesn't occur in Sydney but is a bit more north. Today we're picking up habitats made by Megan to try and encourage people's knowledge of solitary bees and get them to connect with solitary bees. Even though Wild Things is a program and therefore EnviroTube focuses mainly on Tetragonula, you're actually the solitary bee expert. <laughs> so I was just looking at your garden here and we've got some magnificent solitary bee habitat set up. We do. Now, how many gardens would you come to and see this sort of thing? <laughs> Not enough. Now, in fact, I'm pretty sure that that's set up for blue-banded bees. It is, it is. Um, and successfully so. They've, uh, I, I made them last uh, autumn mm -hmm. and they were habit inhabiting it by the end of summer. Well, what we have here is the blue-banded bee habitat. Now, you can see here the holes that's where the blue banded bees are living? Yes, um, so you can tell um, because they've been filled in a little bit, ah, there is right. some habitat, they have come in there and then they've pushed the sand out to, to close it so up. So why do we like blue banded bees? What's um, so good about them? Well, they're all awesome pollinators um, and especially the blue bandits and the teddy bear bees are buzz pollinators. Right. So they will, they will hang on to the, um, the flower and they vibrate their, their thoracic muscles and um, that then makes the pollen puff out and, ah. and it, it's, it's, they sonicate the, the, um, the flower so that the pollen is... Sonicate? Yeah. That sounds so a bit it's, dodgy, it's like, doesn't it? <laughs> like a, a tuning fork. Wow. So you, you, if you yeah, tap yeah. a tuning fork and, and put it on a flower, it will actually, the, depending on the type of flower, something like a tomato flower, and it will actually make the... The, uh, the pollen pump. So if you're out. growing tomatoes, you really want blue banded bees? Absolutely, and they really like them too. They're actually quite attracted to tomato plants. Now, how many people would have a solitary bee habitat set up for blue banded bees? Some of the ones that I've talked to and, and done some seminars and things like that, and they've all promised me that they'd go home <laughs> and make some Well, how do you habitat. do it? Look, I can see you've got a besser block here. Yep. And you've got soil. What sort of soil is it? This is just, um, it's you could use bricky sand. I was really lucky this was from um, a, an excavation, a home excavation type thing. And I was lucky enough to get it from the landscaper. And then you've got the uh, white plastic. They're downpipes, are they? Yeah, that's right. They're cut into pieces. Which do you prefer? I prefer these because they're more stable. Um, these kind of move around a fair bit. It would depend on your, on, on your um, area that you want to put these it in. These must be heavy, though. They are quite heavy. Um, but you... you, you can, you ran the earth rather than um, making it wet and oh, yes, with okay. the besser blocks you can really get sunned. So no matter what you cut down, if there's a bit of bare ground and then all of the shrubs and stuff will grow up over that but they won't push them out of the so way. So how long did it take for the blue banded bees to know they were here and move in? From spring to the end of summer, like autumn, so a, a year but one growing year sort of right which was did, pretty good did you know you had blue banded bees here yep. before this yeah okay so if you didn't have blue banded bees around well in the sydney area as long as there's um enough food for them there there should be about 200 species of bee within your area i mean if it's been completely denuded and it's very urban and there's no trees or, f or flowers there's not a lot of likelihood of them being around. But 70% of our solitary bees actually live in the ground. So no matter what you cut down, if there's a bit of bare ground, yes. it is possible to have and bees. something for them to eat. Yeah, so if you can provide them with food and some artificial habitat, you may actually be able to help in increase their populations. I want you to look out for part two of our bee story. If you're interested in bees, this is a must.